Now, there were four expectant fathers waiting in the emergency room. The deliveries of their babies were anticipated with great expectancy. And while their wives were in labor, they paced the floors back and forth in conversation with one another. Then the nurse arrived and she announced to the first man, congratulations, you're the father of twins. And he said, wow, isn't that something? I work for the Minnesota Twins. Now, a few moments later, the nurse came out again and said to the second father, congratulations, you're the father of triplets. What? That's amazing. I work for 3M. Wow. A few minutes later, the nurse comes out once again and speaks to the fourth father and says, you're not going to believe this, but you're the father of uh, quadruplets. And he goes, really? This is so wild. I work for Four Seasons. With that, the last father was listening to all of this and getting woozy and sick, and he just fainted on the floor. And when the nurse came and brought him back together to consciousness and awakened him, he said, I don't believe it. I should never have taken that job working for 7-Eleven. <laughs> Thank you. Try the veal. I'm here all week. Yeah. Living in expectancy. This is what we're talking about for 2020. We're living in the power of expectancy in our lives and how beautiful and amazing it can be. So let me ask you, are you ready to embrace this kind of lifestyle for the new year? This lifestyle that's all about the power of expectancy at work within you each and every day of your life. It's a state of thinking that I'm living with this mindset of consciousness, awareness within me, operating that every single day I wake up in a spirit, a way of thinking, a consciousness that says I am in expectancy. It's waking up and allowing this power to be at work within you, for it is a powerful force when we engage in the work of expectancy within our hearts and our lives. For expectancy is really an upward and an outward thinking. It is a forward way of thinking in each and every day of our lives. It is moving us in a way that we're moving forward, we're moving upward in consciousness, upward in awareness, upward in our whole frame of mind of thinking to that wonderful heavenly realm, the place where all things are working together for good. We're in that kind of mindset, that state of thinking. It is this wonderful place where we know that every thought is creative. Now, we're all in agreement on that. Every thought is creative. We've been studying this, learning this together, the power of thinking, the power of thought, and it'd be creative. Every single thing. Why, this chair that you're sitting on, someone thought about it, how its design, its style, before it was even created. You know, this wonderful outfit that you're wearing. Someone thought about creating that outfit, those shoes, that blouse, that jacket. Whatever it may be, they put together creative thought and it manifested or brought about something within this world. So we know the power of thought is very creative in our lives. Now, when that thought is filled with expectancy, that thought takes on a new power and shape and form. For it has this awareness that says something good is just around the corner. Something powerful is a form is shaping and forming for me. I know that all things work together for good to them that love the Lord and claiming that passage and living it out daily in our lives. We know that this power can be so uh, motivating and upward in its direction where we find that simple story of the train, the little engine that could. How many of you are familiar with that or maybe grew up with that or read it to your children or grandchildren? Where you know the story of that engine that begins to say, I think I can, I think I can, I think I can, I think I can. When all other engines were asked, can you pull the load up the mountain? Can you move in this upward direction? Can you move in such a forward way that it pulls the load with you that you find great success? And all the other engines turned down the opportunity, but the little engine that could says, I think I can, I think I can. And in this illustration, we find not only is it the thought that is creative and putting about, but there's a power of application that the train begins to move, the little engine begins to move, the little engine begins to pull, and success is there as it achieves the goal. So 
true in our hearts and our lives. When we put this creative thought into action with the power of expectancy behind it, it says, I expect that I can. I expect, and so I move, I act, I wake up. This day I know that I can. I am in this power of expectancy living each and every day in our lives. Now, it's not just thinking, but it's doing. So the little engine is pulling the load up the uh, mountaintop. It is actually in this wonderful power of not only thought, but action coupled with it. Today's scripture lesson that you read so beautifully says, Truly I tell you, if anyone says to this mountain, go throw yourself into the sea, and does not doubt in their heart, in their consciousness, in their thinking, in their very understanding, but believes, and they say it will happen, it will be done. Whoa, that's pretty heavy faith. That's faith in action. A lot of people have read this passage of Scripture down through the years. Yes, it's lovely to think that someone, sometime, someone may have the power to say, I believe it so, I say it is, but I don't really expect it to happen. And so we've lived our spiritual lives often in that kind of context. These lovely passages in the Bible, they're sweet, they're nice. We don't really live by them, do we? Of course we do. When we find these passages, they are that which is setting down the very promises that are foundational for us. So if you're looking for a promise for this whole year of the life of expectancy and looking out, this is your passage, the signature passage that says for us exactly how we framework this year, that if we believe it will happen, it will happen. If you believe it will happen with the power of expectancy within your lives, it does. Now, here's the beautiful thing we open up our lives to. It happens, this or something better. That's the beautiful thing, that we're always opening our lives in the spirit of expectancy. It's coupled with this wonderful feeling within our hearts and our lives that what we are claiming, what we're believing for, it could be this or it's even something better within our lives. That's that power that says God is able to work in me, through me, around me, unfolding my highest and best at any time. And I allow that infinite knowledge of God to unfold in a way that is my highest and best. There could be something better, something better than I've claimed, something better than I believe for. And I allow that to happen within me. So that power of expectancy is at work within us. This means that whenever we put this power to work, it sort of ignites something within us. It ignites a force within us. It ignites a strength of faith within us. But we believe that every action is coupled with a wonderful result, a manifestation. That when we're moving forward, we believe in this upward way that that which we've ignited, this power of believing, it's going to bring about the answer that we're seeking. This is the power of faith at work within our hearts and our lives. That means whenever we put our expectancy, whatever we put our attention to, we create that kind of experience within us. Years ago, I, as a young man, had the opportunity to teach and work in Kenya. And I've told you my life stories over and over again. In particular, I went to Kenya, uh, returning back to Kenya as a young boy at age 19. I had completed high school at 16. I had already gone on to two years of seminary style training in Bible education and had the opportunity to go back to Kenya to do an internship there at 19. I lived with a wonderful family. There was kind of my host home in Kenya, but you know, this was my homeland. And so how wonderful it was to be there and to operate and to do all kinds of ministry opportunities. In particular, my work was along the Western area of Kenya, going from village to village. Uh, offering uh, spiritual education. Uh, I would teach the women in the morning, the children in the afternoon, and the men in the evening. And as a young 19-year-old now, you know how it is that their expectation as they came and gathered together was that here, you're going to teach us. And it was quite often that, you know, you can't go along with a little 20-minute sermon. You had a 20-minute sermon, but they would say, sit down, we're going to sing a song, get another text, you're going again. Now you know why I preach an hour or longer, uh huh? So that was my foundation. 
uh, because their expectancy was, okay, you're going to give it to us because we're here all day for you and you're here all day for us. So I enjoyed the opportunity to uh, teach and to work in these environments. So quite often they would say, we're going to send you to some new villages. You're the young kid. You're the whippersnapper. You can go on those long hikes, long uh, village trails. You can go where the roads don't go. You can go into those areas as a young kid. We're going to send you there. So quite often they would say, take some local transportation. Hop in the back of this little truck. It's going to take you way up to the highlands areas along the western regions of Kenya. You're going to go there and you'll find a village that you're going to stop at. And uh, you're going to get off and just wait there in the village and someone will find you. What? You're going to wait there and someone will find you. Yes, one of the other tribes will come. They'll be notified that they'll come and look for you in the village setting and they'll take you on into the hikes. They take you deeper into some of the further villages way on. Okay. I was a young kid. I'm thinking, all right, someone will find you. Yes, they will. Honey, you're the only white man there anyway. So, you know, it's not like they're going to look around like, where is he? You know. You're going to stick out like a sore thumb. So, um, okay. So, you know, I, there was a little comfort found in that. And so I would get off the local transportation and I would sit there and wait and wait and wait and just sit and stand and, you know, be contemplating, thinking sooner or later someone will find me. And in those moments, I just remember the phrase, they will find you. Two hours ago by, they will find you. Four hours go by. They will find you. Six hours go by. They will find you. And they did. Here's the thing. You're holding on to that expectancy with those words. They will find you is what held me. I know that I'm not going to leave this place. I don't have to be afraid. Someone will come and get me. They will find was the promise that they offered. Now, here's the thing. The scriptures also offer us as a promise. It says, don't worry. The law is going to be at work. It will work for you. The they will find you promise or principle is found within the scripture that as you believe without any doubt and you speak it, it will happen for you. So you can expect it. You can live in expectancy for this promise is there. I sat in those villages with the spirit of expectancy, knowing that the phrase, they will find you, was comforting, strengthening, and encouraging, and helping me wait out the hours. How often we've negated all these scripture promises that are there, that are the same principle. For this promise says, it's there for you as you speak. So it is, with this power of faith, believing, and an air of expectancy coupled with it, that's ignited this power to move to a new level, wow, you can live in perfect peace, assurance. You can live resting and knowing that the promise of God is at work for you. It's very powerful to act as if and just uh, as we proceed through work and proceed through life, uh, it's that we're working through things in our lives that we say, this is my expectancy and now I act it out. I love how every Bible story is our story. So today I want to take you to your story, the story of Jericho and the walls of Jericho. You see the children of Israel moving into this promised land and this one were there to occupy the, the land and to take over that which was claimed for themselves, but found many obstacles in their pathway. Here was the fortress, the walls of the city of Jericho seemingly an obstacle for them to be able to move in and to possess the land. So the Spirit of God speaks to them and says, I want you to march around this city. And every day, march around. And you think, what? You can imagine the instruction given to you. Yeah, would you get up and march around Atlanta? And something amazing is going to happen. You're like, are you crazy? Why am I marching around the city? Why am I marching around these formidable walls? How is that going to change anything? But you see, what was implanted within them is the spirit of expectancy. Okay, we're doing this, but we're doing it because there's an expectation. Something's going to transpire. And on the seventh day of this wonderful journey, 
They got up at daybreak and marched around the city seven times. I love the number seven. It always speaks of completion, speaks of perfection. It's very symbolic for us. And we find it speaking to us in every scripture passage where we find seven. It's talking about something being done to the level of completion or something to be to the level of perfection within our lives. And so they're marching around the city seven times in this beautiful spirit of complete and perfect expectation. Something is going to happen. Now, interestingly enough, I don't think they were informed what was actually going to transpire. They didn't say, you know what, if you walk on, get ready, because on the sixth and a half time, take a deep breath, because, you know, uh, just as you finish around the corner on the seventh time, the walls are going to fall down. Uh, I guess so get ready, because that's what you do. There was an expectation, something, what? I don't know, but something amazing, something good is about to happen. And so we move forward in perfect, complete expectation, knowing that something, whatever it is, is good, is unfolding for me. How can you imagine that being your story? Well, it is. It's your story is every day you wake up in the morning. You're called to look at those things that you may see as obstacles or challenges in your life. It symbolize maybe walls or barriers to your success or achieving your goal. But you know, as you walk in expectation and you walk forward each day in perfect and complete expectation with the idea and knowing and the knowledge, the firm belief that says that which I've claimed to be so with great faith and believing, it shall be so. And that which I claim to believe, I shall can have the very promise that I can stand on and live in expectancy. Something amazing is happening in the midst of these walls and barriers and obstacles in my pathway. They're being removed. How? I don't care. Isn't that wonderful to say, I don't care. I don't care how. I don't need to know how. That's God's work, not your work. We don't have to be so concerned to say, how is God going to do this? How is it going to manifest for me? How is this going to work for me? I need to know that first and foremost. No, you don't. All we need to do is march forward in the spirit of expectancy, a powerful uh, moment within our lives. The seventh time around, the children of Israel were instructed to blow the trumpet, sound the noise of expectancy that now we're waiting. Something's going to happen right now. We proclaim it. We announce it and shout. And as I did, the walls came tumbling down. I've had the opportunity to go to Jericho. I've seen the, the uh, ruins uh, there. I've seen the basis of what the wall was. And I had the chance to see, wow, looking at this story, it just spoke to me in my own life. I know there have been so many barriers in my life that I've looked at time and time again. It seems so formidable. And I thought I will never, ever be able to conquer this or that. But through the power of expectancy, Claiming that I know all things work together for good to them that love the Lord. Claiming that nothing is impossible with God. Claiming that wonderful understanding that in Christ's consciousness, I am strengthened to overcome and to enable to do that which may seem to be difficult or challenging in our world, in our lives. We find then that the power of what happens within our lives is expectancy at work. It's working for us. It's sounding the trumpet that we're called to do every day. This is, I sound the voice, I shout out, I am living in expectancy. And I move forward, I march, I walk every single step of my day in this power. Now, let me tell you this. Living in expectancy is going to keep you spiritually awake. Because why? you're on the edge of something amazing happening. So often in our lives, our spiritual lives, you know, we fall off, we drift off in, from consciousness, full awareness. We kind of fall off and get distracted by the world around us. We fall into a slumber state, shall we say, of not being as attentive to the things that God is doing in our world right here and now. But when you're living in the power of expectancy, it's keeping you awake because you know every single moment something good is about to happen. How many of you remember Christmas as a child? And you lived in expectancy at Christmas Eve. You couldn't sleep. You were so excited about what was going to happen. 
How many of you are ready to go on vacation? You pack your bags and you can't sleep that night because you're so full of expectation. You're so full of the power of what's happening. Oh, how fun it's going to be. It's going to be so exciting. I can't wait. You see, it keeps you awake. And so it is spiritually as we're living in this power of expectancy. Our spiritual lives are on the edge, the cusp. We're on that wonderful place of saying something good. What? I don't know, but something good is happening. And I'm so expecting it. I'm looking for it. I'm watching for it. I am conscious uh, of it at all times. And my attention is upon the something good unfolding for me. Let me tell you this. Where your attention goes, your energy flows. Where your attention goes, your energy flows. Where your attention is, uh, it's that energy will be drawn to it. And where your intention, the desire you express goes, your energy flows there. So my attention is on the all good. And my intention is for the all good to transpire within my life. My attention on the all good and my intention, my desire and expression is that it's all good. So attention and intention are at work, and they are creating this power of energy within our lives, an expectancy that opens up the doors for our lives. This expectancy also does something for us. Get ready. Hang on. It jettisons you into a level of consciousness that goes beyond the whatever state to what's coming, what's about to happen, what's around the corner. You're jettisoned to this different place in consciousness. That it just sort of pushes you like almost uh, the rubber band pulled behind and you're, you're moving into this new place because you're living in the power of this expectancy. You're now in this wonderful place that say, it says, what's ahead? What's on the road around the corner? I don't know, but it's good. I know the all good is unfolding for me. I know God is good all the time, all the time. God is good. What's on this unknown road? I don't know. Because let me tell you this. Don't the greatest adventures happen for us on the most unknown roads? The familiar roads, the streets you travel all the time. They're not necessarily filled with exciting new adventures. But when you get off the beaten path, when you take those trails and you go off into the unknown areas, suddenly that's when the great adventures are unfolding for us. For it's the unknown road that we must become so comfortable with. Because when we travel that unknown road, it's the road of expectancy for our lives. It's the feeling that we take on to say, what's around the bend? What's around through the forest? What's around this curve? What's the next thing that is happening for us? And when we're traveling this unknown road, the road of something good being around the corner, that's what the life that we're called to live is all about. That's our spiritual life at work living in its vibrancy. Because driving around some of the new roads and looking for new locations may be exactly what we're doing each and every day in our life, something new to unfold. Now, three years ago, we sold our former building, and we had wondrous questions. Where are we going to go? One day, I just got in my car, and I just said, Spirit of God, I know that there's something out there. There's a building for us. Where? I don't know. But I'm going to travel some unknown roads. I got in the car, and I began to drive uh, down some roads I'd never ventured down to explore, some warehouse districts, thinking, well, maybe there's something there. And I came upon some fabulous buildings and wonderful locations just off Interstate 85 and began to look at the signs and said, for sale, for sale. And I thought, oh, wow, the Spirit is leading us in this unknown road to something wonderful. Now, none of those buildings were actually for sale. They had old for sale signs, but I did encounter a real estate agent who led us to say, I do have another building for you. And we looked at the building at Cliff Valley Way. Some of you who are with us, remember, we bought another building. And we held that for a while. And on the road of expectancy and the adventure of traveling down this road, like, what's next? What's next? Suddenly we're in this building and we're excited about what's going to unfold in that location. And someone calls and says, can I buy that building from you? And if you remember, we said yes and sold it for a half a million dollars more than what we paid for it. Best bank sale we ever had. Yeah, I'm loving it. Uh, then that led us to say, what's next in this road of adventure? 
what's unfolding for us. And we discover this location and we find it to be even better than before. And we're living in this, this or something better lifestyle. We're traveling down the roads and saying, where's the spirit going to take us? I don't know. What are we expecting? Nothing but good. What will we find there? Amazing things. That's the lifestyle we're living in 2020 as a congregation. We're called to put that attention and intention to work and to expect to see. For what we put our attention on, the unseen is there to unfold for us. We put our faith in a higher power and we channel that attention and energy towards the thing that we desire in our lives. This is what's so crucial for us. This is what makes a church alive. This is what makes your spiritual life alive. It's the characteristic of every healthy, growing spiritual person. It's the characteristic of every healthy, growing congregation. And that is the attitude that every day I live in expectancy. It's forward, upward thinking. It's igniting a power of faith within us. It's expecting God to keep God's promises because that's what expectation is all about. Because let me just... Step back and reframe this for you once again. Did we not just read a text from Scripture that we believe to be true, but we so often don't apply to the fullest extent? It's a passage that's invited us to this journey that says you have the right, you have the authority, you have the God-given pleasure and the joy of knowing that God is keeping God's promises. This is the law. This is the spiritual law at work and how it works for our lives. So as we move in expectancy, what we'll find for us in this year is walls falling down, challenges removed, barriers, obstacles taken away. We're going to find this because that's how we live and move. Every step is I expect good. I expect amazing. I expect the unfolding of the goodness of God in all things. We've seen it in the past. We've told the stories of this unfolding of this congregation, how it's moved to this place. We've told the stories that have unfolded scriptural passages in true application. Today, we ignite this power of expectancy to say this is our year to go even further, to take that to the fullest to take it into a place where we say, this is my year I'm living in expectancy. Would you say that with me? This is my year I am living in expectancy. Amen. So it is.